Without it, few things on Earth could survive for very long. And unfortunately, Mother Nature is not always reliable. The result is often drought and the tremendous hardships that severe water shortages can cause. The consequences of allowing crops and landscape vegetation to die can run into the millions of dollars and cause long-term environmental problems. Throughout the country, rural and urban areas alike continue to grapple with how to best manage limited and often overburdened water supplies. It's become a long-term problem of national proportions, requiring each community to develop long-range measures for the inevitable water shortages that will occur. The key for any community is to recognize that water conservation must be practiced all the time, not just when emergency conditions arise. An overall water management plan must be practiced continually to ensure an abundant year-round water supply. And an integral part of this plan should be proper irrigation and drainage. But many of us see irrigation as a luxury, as an unnecessary and wasteful use of a precious resource. There is often public pressure during periods of severe drought to dramatically curtail or totally eliminate irrigation. An improperly designed and poorly managed system can be wasteful. Many communities limit landscape irrigation to handheld hose usage, which often has disastrous effects during drought emergencies. The average homeowner has absolutely no idea what volume of water to apply and in what frequencies. A well-designed and maintained irrigation system accurately applies the volume of water needed operates during evening or early morning hours when wind and evaporation rates are at a minimum, distributes water accurately and precisely where it is needed, and can adjust automatically to current moisture levels. The efficiency of this irrigation system is vastly superior to that of individual handheld hose applications. Scientific studies have proven that water savings average 66% when a properly designed and maintained irrigation system is used, as compared to permitting individual homeowners to use handheld hoses. Because so much water is used in the landscape, it's an area that we can save a lot of water in. The way we can save water is to be more efficient in how we irrigate that landscape. When you install an irrigation system, have a professional do it for you. Make sure it's designed properly. Make sure it's maintained properly. Make sure that the valves are adjusted properly and that the spray pattern is, is right. If we work hard on maintaining our irrigation systems, if we work hard on, lands on irrigating our landscape properly, we can make a lot of difference in water savings in California, and that will help all of us. To gain a basic understanding of proper irrigation techniques, the first thing to realize is that there are a vast array of irrigation systems available, and that the way to extend water supplies is often a combination of different components and management practices. Irrigation systems fall into three basic categories, surface furrow, sprinkler, and drip micro or low pressure systems. Surface or furrow irrigation is the oldest method of irrigation and is primarily used for agricultural purposes. It's most appropriate in relatively flat terrain where runoff is not a serious problem and where abundant water is available. The process has been improved through the use of lasers and in recent years with surge irrigation techniques, wherein the water flow is pulsated rather than flowing constantly, which decreases the amount of water used and can result in increased irrigation efficiencies. Sprinkler irrigation was originally adopted in areas with rolling hills where surface irrigation would be ineffective. The most basic agricultural system is comprised of numerous sections of pipe which are physically moved to where they're needed. Solid set systems wherein the pipe and sprinkler head are permanently built into a field are well suited to both agricultural and some landscape applications where permanent or semi-permanent crops will remain year after year. With side roll systems, sections of pipe are on wheels and driven by engines, thereby increasing portability and coverage. The granddaddy of agricultural sprinkler irrigation is the center pivot system, which is anchored in the center of a field, driven by motors, programmed to proceed at a particular speed, and to distribute a specific amount of water. 
Many center pivot systems utilize impact sprinklers under high pressure and are designed for tall crops in large fields. New technological advancements, such as low energy precision application, or LEPA, are enabling us to adapt these systems to operate under much lower water pressure, thereby reducing the amount of water and energy required. LEPA irrigation saves water primarily by decreasing the spray evaporation losses from sprinklers, you eliminate your deep percolation loss, and also your runoff. It also increases management potential and allows you to go to uh, high frequency irrigation, which is very advantageous to a cotton yields, and it gives uh, a higher yields on the order of anywhere from 20 to 40 percent over fur irrigation and sprinkler irrigation on much less water. A variety of sprinkler systems are appropriate for landscape purposes. These systems can direct water to precise areas and with recent technological developments can automatically control the frequency, amount, and duration of applications. Impact sprinklers and full-size rotor sprinklers are often used on large open areas. Half and quarter circle sprinklers are appropriate for corners, sidewalk edges, and odd-shaped open spaces. And spray head sprinklers are often used for confined space watering. The third major category of irrigation systems is low volume, or drip micro. These systems were originally developed to water tree crops and other stationary, deep-rooted vegetation. Water under low pressure traveling through tubing is released at designated times to ensure that each plant gets the necessary amount of moisture without wasting water in adjacent areas. The use of these low volume systems has been expanded in recent years to high yield crops such as strawberries, tomatoes, and cotton. In landscape applications, drip emitters and underground soaker hose can be the most effective and efficient choice with certain types of deep rooted vegetation. Flower beds are a popular choice for underground soaker hose because the water reaches only the roots and not the surface so germination of weeds is minimized. The drip really gives me the flexibility to control how much water I have, uh, how much I want to spend for the water. Uh, for example, what I really have is three separate systems. Uh, a drip system for the trees, a drip system for the bushes, and uh, then I have an under the ground system uh, uh, to sprinkle the ice plant because I only want to sprinkle the ice plant maybe uh, once a month at certain times of the year and uh, once every two weeks other times. But I want to water my shrubbery and my trees more often than that. Uh, also, I want the water down deep where the trees will, will use it. But this saves me a lot of money. Uh, I've got roughly eight times the area now uh, planted that I had when I first moved here, and my water bills are only about 50% of what, uh, what they were. In home landscape systems, timers, if properly managed, are a good first step in applying a specified amount of water at optimum times. However, fluctuations in daily temperatures, rainfall, and the varying requirements of different parts of the area need to be taken into consideration to avoid unnecessary and wasteful watering. Moisture sensors can be installed in each zone of a landscape system. If the sensor detects that the zone in question does not need watering, it will not let the sprinkler in that zone come on thereby conserving water. So there's a brief look at a few of the many types of surface, sprinkler, and drip irrigation systems available today. But what's the right combination of systems for your community? And how can you be sure that your system will be efficient and save water? Here are five basic steps which should be followed. First, the system must be designed properly. Then, the proper equipment must be selected. Third, the installation must be done properly. Then, the entire system must be maintained regularly. And finally, the system must be managed properly in accordance with the overall community water management plan. Proper design involves evaluation of plant types, ground contour, soil type, infiltration rates, water holding capacity, evapotranspiration rates, along with the overall water management plan. It's absolutely critical that the individuals making these determinations have the professional expertise to evaluate all of these factors. 
In order to ensure proper design, a qualified designer should be consulted to help choose, from the many types of equipment available, the methods and materials best suited for each particular situation. Careful installation by irrigation professionals is then needed to transform the designer's blueprints into a smoothly operating irrigation system. In order to maintain peak performance, the system requires proper maintenance and management. It needs to be monitored and evaluated on a regular basis by an irrigation professional to ensure that all the various components are working properly as well as to modify the application rates as necessary to accommodate for seasonal changes and other variables. While an irrigation professional should devise an optimum scheduling plan, the implementation of scheduling rests with the operator of the system. This management is essential in avoiding wasteful losses of water and excessive leaching or runoff of fertilizer and other chemicals. And preventive maintenance by an industry professional is extremely important in avoiding costly repairs for years to come. So, there are a lot of different systems to choose from and five basic steps to follow to make sure your investment is a wise one. But how do you find the answers to all these questions? The Irrigation Association is the source for information on irrigation. The IA has a national database of qualified irrigation specialists who have completed IA certification programs in design, installation, and management, demonstrating their basic understanding of the principles of irrigation. IA has seminars and workshops, and works with universities and independent testing laboratories to educate operators in the specialized maintenance and water management techniques necessary to operate an irrigation system to peak efficiency. The Center for Irrigation Technology serves the irrigation industry by providing an independent laboratory for the testing and evaluation of irrigation equipment. We've tested a wide variety of products for clients ranging from suppliers and manufacturers to consultants and end users such as farmers, golf course superintendents, and grounds managers. In short, IA was created to help communities, the end users, select and maintain their irrigation systems. The bottom line is that through irrigation, everyone throughout the country can enjoy green, irrigated landscapes and healthy crops while protecting our limited water resources. Rather than simply trying to manage a limited water supply, we should concentrate our efforts on providing enough water for everyone. And that's the goal of the Irrigation Association and its members. Irrigation. It's a water conservation measure that no community should be without.